from the Tribune News Network, this is Newsbreak. I'm Krishna Russell. Prime Minister Dr. Hubert Minnis urged Bahamians to get the COVID-19 vaccine without delay. After 33,600 doses of the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine arrived in the country yesterday, the vaccines add to the 20,000 doses the Indian government donated earlier this month and are among the 100,800 doses prepaid through the Pan American Health Organization revolving fund. As more people become vaccinated, Dr. Minnis said, the country will be able to relax restrictions and to see more of our family and friends. He said, quote, we will be able to open up the economy and to get back to work. Health officials have informed me that they are pleased with the number of people who have taken the vaccine so far. This comes as vaccinations expanded to islands outside of New Providence and Grand Bahama, with shots being administered in Eleuthera yesterday. Vaccinations started Tuesday on Eleuthera and will continue through April 1, starting with health care workers, residents over 60, and staff of the uniformed branches, Dr. Menes said. Vaccinations on Abaco and Bimini are expected to start after the Easter holidays. A relative of missing passenger Stephen Sawyer says the family will continue to search for him as they believe wholly and solely that he's alive more than three weeks after the plane he was on crashed in waters near Selena Point. The family member spoke after a preliminary report by the Air Accident Investigation Authority into that plane crash off of Acklands earlier this month said there has been no recovery of the aircraft or its occupants. The report released yesterday noted that since March 5th, when Sawyer and pilot Cliff Dean went missing. There has been no recovery of the aircraft or its occupants. Speaking to the Tribune, Sawyer's brother Charles Sawyer said the family has not given up hope despite what the report has said. Former parliamentarian Loretta Butler-Turner has made an appeal for greater gender balance in the political representation of Bahamians in the lead-up to the next general election. In an interview with the Tribune yesterday, the former official opposition leader contended the nation is weak in this aspect, noting it has been more than 20 years since there was considerable female leadership in government. Currently, there is only one woman cabinet minister. Mrs. Butler-Turner, who stressed she is not entering politics and wishes to shy away from criticizing any political party, emerged vocally in public when she supported Democratic National Alliance leader Arinthia Komalafe after her arrest and release last week. A 74-year-old fisherman who complained of shortness of breath died in Bimini early Tuesday morning after he was not evacuated to New Providence because he reportedly weighed too much. The family of Louis Edward Roll, who said he was diagnosed with COVID-19, said officials believed they could not safely transport him in the special chamber used to move COVID-19 patients because he did not meet weight requirements. This episode could reignite questions about the country's capacity to airlift Family Island residents who experience medical distress stress during the pandemic. Your complete news and information source, this is the Tribune News Network. In international news, Pfizer announced today that its COVID-19 vaccine is safe and strongly protective in kids as young as age 12, a step toward possibly beginning shots in this age group before they head back to school in the fall. Most COVID-19 vaccines being rolled out worldwide are for adults who are at high risk from the coronavirus. Pfizer's vaccine is authorized for ages 16 and older, but vaccinating children of all ages will be critical to stopping the pandemic and helping schools, at least the upper grades, start to look a little more normal after months of disruption. A new report says U.S. deaths last year topped 3.3 million for the nation's highest annual death toll, including about 375 deaths from the coronavirus. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention released the report today. In 2020, COVID-19 was the third leading cause of U.S. deaths after heart disease and cancer. Overall, the death rate was up nearly 16 percent compared to the previous year. The COVID-19 death rate was highest among Hispanic people. The Tribune's AccuWeather update a service of Bahamas Power and Light Company. A ridge of high pressure prevails across the area, maintaining very warm conditions while producing moderate to strong winds. There is a risk of rip currents, especially along the eastern shorelines. For all areas, it'll be partly cloudy, very warm and breezy to windy, with isolated fast-moving showers. Partly cloudy and mild tonight, with a few stray showers. Small craft caution is in effect for the southwest Bahamas, while small crafts advise 
advisory is in effect for the central and southeast Bahamas. Winds east to southeast at 15 to 20 knots over open waters in the northwest Bahamas. Easterly at 15 to 20 knots in the central and southeast Bahamas. Seas 4 to 6 feet over the ocean in the northwest Bahamas. 5 to 8 feet in the central and southeast Bahamas. We'll have a daytime high temperature of 88 degrees and an overnight low temperature of 71. The sun will set at 724 and will rise tomorrow morning at 701. That's Newsbreak. Details of the day's top stories in the Tribune newspaper, now on the streets. Or stay up to date online at Tribune242.com.